in some ways, I think Eric contradicts himself here. And, and I like the article. I, I think it's definitely it's, food for thought and, and definitely worth time? diving into. But but he then goes on to say, this is the next paragraph after acting as training cones. The boutique club programs these kids are meant to play in aren't helping either. A while back, the U.S. Soccer Federation de-emphasized high school soccer in order to prioritize club soccer. That was a mistake. Our best young players now have no idea what pressure is. They play their biggest games in front of a few parents and lawn chairs rather than a buzzing high school stadium where pride and a sense of occasion are on the line, as are your opponent's fans who are yelling at you for 90 minutes. But we could argue that when you play in high school, you're playing with half the team that are effectively known as traffic cones. <laughs> or oh, that, that, uh, my experience was real. Those are real traffic cones that were just like <laughs> so, that so were there to cut my ankles up every time I got the ball. <laughs> I loved my high school experience, and I'm Same. with him on this. I think that kids – not only have to deal with the pressure, but I also think there's so much value in learning how to become a leader when you're playing with somebody who isn't as good as you and you have to get them to raise their game to your level or you got to meet them somewhere and you can't belittle those players. You have to figure out a way to, to, to raise them up. And how do you do that? I don't think you get that at that, you know, the MLS Academy where everybody's pretty good and, and it's more the coach kind of dictating what the asks are. But in this moment, you have to figure out ways to get more out of these kids that can't do what they can do. And, and I find that to be very important in terms of the development of the intangibles of leadership and, and communication and all that other good stuff. But that kind of contradicts what he said before, because there are a lot of kids that aren't good enough in high school. Well, all I can say is from my personal experience, high school was, was incredible for me because I, I went to a boring school. So shout out to independent school league of course you did. in new England. And, um, uh, <laughs> And to uh, and mahogany walls his whole life. Charlie, the, Charlie's about to get his kids scholarships if he finishes it. <laughs> yeah. Shout go. out to uh, his tennis coach. <laughs> hey, Brook, Brook School was was where where it all happened for me because I really matured living at school and I was in a perfect environment. I had, you know, I was being pushed by teachers, uh, teachers, classmates, um, and my advisor. So I think from from my perspective, it comes down to the coaches. It comes That's down to high school, though, Charlie. That's not high school. No. Your experience is not high school. It's not, it's not a traditional high school. No, absolutely not. And I know that, but I'm telling, I'm, what I'm saying is you can still go to high school and make it as a professional and still yeah. it, it, just as much as you would have had you not done the high school route and just played. Cause we all know what burnout is. We all know about one education too, because you, you don't want to get to your first contract and you don't know how to, to add. Right. So yeah. I think for me, it's case by case basis, but ultimately the best coaching gets the kids to to a place where they can you know feel wh whether they're ready for professional soccer or if they're ready to to kind of go in a different direction. So I th I think what it comes down to is setting up your players to succeed. So the the most super talented ones pushing them in the right way and the ones who need to catch up giving them the right instructions so that they feel comfortable and they know what they're doing on the pitch. So it they they aren't traffic cones cuz yeah. we all know in Europe they don't have the athleticism that all, all uh, most Americans have. But what they do have is an understanding of the game and tactic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I be technique. If I can't out muscle somebody or run by somebody, but my first touch is on point, guess what? That that I I nullify your speed just by that. I'm in the right position. Mm -hmm. and my, so mm -hmm. I think when you have people who are just looking for hot takes and writing crazy articles and doing all this, they don't give you that, and it's yeah. hard to understand that. Well. Maybe, but I, do, I mean, he does. He does bring up the coaching stuff, uh, and, and that's the kind of the back end of it that that we need some yeah. coaches as well. In fairness mm -hmm. to him, but but I would say to your point, Charlie, yeah, there's not a there's not as much nuance. You you almost wanted to continue to give you more context and and more understanding but, of where he's coming from. But what, one of the things that I wanted to say about it is the thing that I was excited about. I only played one year of high school soccer, but what I learned. Then from playing pro. high school soccer and then yeah and then i yeah uh, exactly uh no but i and then i went to img right the flip yeah. side was i was playing high school soccer in modesto california and what i learned about that more than the game days itself which was there was pressure is that i was playing every day with 17 and 18 year olds as a 14 year old kid and the pressure that came from just the hierarchical nature of a high school right of playing with older kids on a varsity team and me being the young one is that there was more pressure on me to not make mistakes, to play to their level. They were athletically more gifted. They were physically more developed. There were all these things that I remember and experienced versus the club environment, which the next year I went to residency and I was in an incredible environment every single day. Intense, whether it was school, on the field, off the field, intense environment, but we never played games. You never played any games of meaning 
an, an impact, which I thought was the downside to that, to that program, right? Which is like, we got all the training in the world, all the intense training in the world once, twice a day, but you never got to actually have the pressure of what that meant to play in games. Cause you played a local club team, you played the U18s, you'd play a youth national team game, you'd go to a tournament, but you didn't have a consistent world where you were being put to test in pressured environments. You were just training in pressured environments. And I think there's a big gap there as well that mm -hmm. yeah, from my experience that I really liked in high school because it was pressure. I had some 18 year old kid yelling at me uh, that was in my eyes better than me. Right. And again, maybe it was the area that I was in or the league that I played in was competitive and things like that. But it, it, I, there were some benefits to me that were different than a, a completely different environment yes. that I was in. What do you know about pressure? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ace Ventura and all Ace Ventura fans out there. <laughs> this is a British football pod slash Ace Ventura pod. <laughs> So, okay, we're going to leave that conversation because there's a lot to dissect. I think we could have a, one whole podcast just on some of the yes. points that he brought up. But ultimately, I do think that our coaching education needs to improve. I know a lot of coaches here locally where I am that have full-time jobs that are also coaching to make a little, a little side scratch just because they love to do it, but don't have time to also go get that additional coaching from U.S. soccer or or – the coaches, the U.S. soccer coaches, uh, or any of that type. They just don't have time to go make that happen, even though they might have the thirst to do it. So it's really interesting to see how we're going to continue to solve that problem. Because to his point, I think we do have plenty of kids that want to play, but how are they learning the game, to Chuck's point? All right, so Jesse Marsh, we're going to move it along, came out and said on the Twitters, I've taken some time out for myself over the last couple of months, and it's been a good chance to reflect on aspects of life while in Leeds. I'm very proud of our achievements, like staying up, uh, in 2122, and when I look back on my time at Leeds, I will think of that with great pride. I'm also grateful to work with a great group of players and staff, and have met some fantastic people in Yorkshire. I'm taking some time to consider the right next step, but until then, I'll be enjoying my time with family and friends. So that's Jesse Marsh breaking his silence after getting sacked, and Leeds are still in a perilous position. So we'll see how that unfolds. But let's get to some fun stuff to tie up this last one. And if you're not watching, then uh, you're going to have to go find it on the internet. But uh, the U.S. women's national team dropped a new kit ahead of the Women's World Cup that's happening in Australia this summer. And there's also a new secondary kit, away kit. It feels like Nike heard everybody's complaints with regard to, uh, all right, the World Cup jerseys maybe weren't that good. Here's some new ones. Maybe you guys like these ones instead. And so we're going we're gonna to rate those right now. And uh, hopefully producer Alex can provide us with one of the two. The first one, was a little bit of a splatter one. Still feels like a warm up for me in some capacity. We got uh, Alex Morgan rocking it here, and hers obviously adorned with a Women's World Cup champion patch, which yeah, that, that takes it to the next level. Mm -hmm. But um, it still feels like a warm up kit for me. I don't know, Chuck. I'll come to you. You know, as, as someone that uh, I know really love those World Cup jerseys, <laughs> uh, the blue ones. Yes, um, <laughs> I mean, all, all of them, Charlie. The clarification. Charlie got that swoosh on blue. today. He got that swoosh on. Just know before he talks. <laughs> Anybody that's listening, it's an audio form. He's got the swoosh on today. He's got the swoosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's in their commercials. Right. He is. That's all right. Uh, these aren't bad. These ones are bad. <laughs> <laughs> you like the drip of the drip here. Yeah, this is like the kind, of, like this is the kind of constructive criticism I got from my high school coach, Charlie. Come on, can you be, can you be more specific, please? <laughs> <laughs> I like the drip. I, I do like yeah. the drip. Like the it's drip different. The drip. I, I actually I do mind. like it too. I, I yeah. like this one also just because it gives it a little bit of a, because of the lack of uniformity and sizing of things, it gives it a little bit of that custom feel of like a little customization. Do you, uh, kit. I kind of want to see sometimes... I need to see the whole thing. You know, when they had the fragmented jersey, I wasn't a big fan of that. But then when you saw it in the full kit, it yeah. looked a lot better. I so told I wonder, you. I told you. I, I know you did. But but now I want to see the full kit here. We're only getting a top half to see for sure. But okay, I, that, this one can win me over. I like the blue collar. I think that's sharp. Let's move over to the other one, which I don't know. It looks like England's kit. It kind of looks like England's. I don't know what it looks like. It's It's Just blue like, with red. It's like royal blue with red. Yeah, Not, I like. The, I prefer navy, but yeah. uh, I'm a navy guy. And yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, 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 <laughs> should know, guys. It, yeah, uh, like Charlie, you, you like the colors. Oh, no? Eunice Musa looks handsome in this photo. I'll just, no, I'll I'm, just start there. I'm not a, a huge fan of of the like. I don't know what kind of red that is. It's not. It's not a like an American flag red. Yeah, it's a little bit like Holland. Looks like the Dutch. It does um, look like the Dutch. In, in a Nike's weird like, way. But listen, I mean, the, the we're going to change it to the team that beat you in the World Cup. 
The color that's itself how, has a little bit of nostalgia good. vibes in it. I don't remember what what era had a little bit of those pointed lines, whether it was a boot or a, I think or it was the total, I, the total, yeah, 90. total 90, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm a sucker for anything that kind of pulls me back into that world. But I will say, unfortunately, the way this kit is made and the, and the materials of it is that no matter how you photo it, it looks like there's stains on it, right? Uh, <laughs> and that's just, again, how patterns work. Whenever you take patterns, it's like when Jimmy when Jimmy wears his super striped shirts on the green screen and you go, Jimmy, we can't see you, man. Like, you're blending in. Uh, there's a, actually the, the those <laughs> patterns are for, for sweat, the sweat contours on your body. Okay. I know that. Chuck's got a degree in in jersey making. I love that. And yeah. and and no, and 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 uh and and uh crisis reading. management of press releases. That's what. Or Charlie's reading, yeah, degree. reading press releases. Very good reading press releases. <laughs> I think they blow. I believe they call that a media spin in Charlie's industry. You know? uh, <laughs> no, it is. I mean, hopefully it is. I I just no one sends me jerseys anymore, so I couldn't tell you what the sweat does uh, when, when, I, when I go through them. You know. And we didn't we didn't have that back in our day. Thank you.